Hello, mini computer. This is the Miele Quieter 3Q and it was on offer from Amazon, 200 pounds. Let's do a quick unboxing. Right, so you have a tiny little flap here, which you pull down. We have a user manual, quick start guide, and that's the PC. It's so tiny, it has on the side three USB sockets, a fourth USB socket, a headset headphone socket, two HDMI, a power socket. Now that is a USB-C, but it is 12 volts. It is not the normal USB 5 volts, and that's the power supply. You then have an ethernet port, and you also have a Kensington lock port as well. These are designed as streaming PCs, so they're designed to sit on the back of a TV, and they are designed to stream media. But because they are fanless and because they're relatively quite powerful, they're really good as astronomy PCs for operating your automation during a night of imaging. Very, very useful. Packaging is quite good actually. It's uh, quite well packaged. And in here you have some mounting brackets which are for mounting on your TV, which I almost certainly uh, won't be using for this. And you have your power supply, which is in there. And then you have a variety of adapters. So that's the UK one, which I'll be using. And then we have some screws. And that is pretty much it in the box. It also has an SD card slot, which is really useful for transferring your media. I tend to use just a normal USB stick or you could do a network transfer, but you do have a little SD card slot there. These PCs come with Windows 11, which is really important because if you're still using Windows 10, I believe the support from Microsoft only lasts until 2025 with Windows 10. Now, I personally feel that with any PC, it should last at least five, if not 10 years. Now, I know many people will disagree with that, but I think if you're investing your hard-earned cash in stuff, it should have a bit of longevity. So I would like to think that this will last me in terms of imaging for at least five, possibly to 10 years. At least that's my plan. I already have one of these. I have the previous version, which is the 2Q, and it's absolutely perfect. And when these were on offer, I thought I would take advantage and add another one so I can run two rigs. Previously, I wanted to use my Raspberry Pi 4 for my second rig. So I would use this running AstroBerry. That was quite successful, actually. It was a huge learning curve to get this up and running. And although it was very successful and I did manage to do it, it takes longer. It absolutely takes longer. And also, I think in hindsight, I will not stop using this. But when you've got uh, a Raspberry Pi, which is really difficult to get hold of at the moment, the supply issues, even now after COVID, after Brexit, um, they're still not able to supply them. So it's really tricky when you have, you know, a, a Raspberry Pi 4, which is the better part of hundred pounds or an entire PC, which yes, is double the price, but does everything and is really quick and able to do everything. It's a tricky decision. I will be using this for more, uh, Raspberry Pi based imaging. Um, but at the moment I want to run two rigs so I can use my time efficiently. So I'm going to use this mini PC. Hello and welcome to the new PC. I'm on it right now. Here we are. I'm remoted in via VNC. This is what I had to install in order to get this PC up and running. First thing I installed was a decent browser. So browser of your choice, I use Chrome but I downloaded Chrome, so it's a browser of your choice that you know will work for you. I know everyone has personal preferences. So I downloaded that and installed that browser. I then downloaded VNC server because I use VNC for remote access upon my mini PCs. And therefore I selected VNC server and I installed that. And that's how I'm now accessing this PC because the PC's d down there at the moment. Um, once I'd done that, it's really important to put some kind of antivirus on. There are free antiviruses. I use AVG free. There are many others available which will look after your machines. Antivirus. 
very useful as well. The next step is to configure this PC to basically never go to sleep because when you are asleep and it's imaging during the night, you don't want this to go to sleep. You want it to run all night long and be super useful by not going to sleep. So down in the search here, you need to select a power plan and I've already searched for these. So edit power plan or choose power plan. I went into edit power plan and then I changed the advanced power settings and I basically changed these to ensure that the PC would not go to sleep. So for example, hard disk, turn off hard disk after zero minutes. I want that to be on, well, never turn it off. So never basically. So it's on zero because it won't turn the hard disk off. Now, it's really important that you check things like sleep because you don't want it to sleep. So sleep after never, for example, hibernate after never, for example, and so on. Another really important one is your USB settings here. So USB selective, I'll start that again, USB selective suspend setting. I've put that as disabled because you don't want it to select which USB has priority. If your mount is guiding and your camera is working at the same time, you don't want one or the other to have priority. You want them all to work at full USB bandwidth. So you need to basically deactivate anything that is going to interfere with your PC during a long imaging session. You just want your PC to run as fast as it can without anything going to put it to sleep. So once you've done that, you click apply and you need to select that power plan. So if you then go into your search again and then choose power plan and then select the power plan that you have just edited. So I, in my case, it's the high performance power plan. So I put that in and I selected that and now this PC has got the high performance power plan. So it shouldn't go to sleep and it should have the best USB performance, etc. That's really important. My next step is to install ASCOM, the ASCOM platform. Now this is basically the platform within which all of the astronomy kit talks to each other if you're using the ASCOM versions of the drivers. So I installed ASCOM platform, which is here. So this is the latest version of ASCOM. Now, interestingly, they used to host the some of the drivers on this web page. They don't do that anymore. And if I go to drivers and plugins, which is behind my head, I will just move that across a little bit. And if I click on go to page, it tells me that all of them are now in GitHub. So it says here, ASCOM Ghost and Legacy Drivers Repository on GitHub. So I suspect if you have a specific ASCOM driver that you want, for example, your Skywatcher mount, you will have to go to the GitHub page or to the manufacturer's page to download your ASCOM driver. You will notice that ASCOM takes a while to install because you need .NET 3.5 installing as well. It just takes a long time and a blue window appears like this. And after that, and it's installed, you click a key and then you're good to go. And you will then, once it has installed, you will have some ASCOM icons here. And that basically means that it's installed the ASCOM platform. The next thing which I install on my machine is EQMod. EQMod is for controlling Skywatch amounts. I use Skywatch mounts, but you can, of course, install the drivers for your mount. So if you've got an iOptron, you will need the iOptron commander software, for example. So Skywatcher EQ mod is the one that I use. It just kind of works. It's a bit tricky to configure, but it just works and I'm quite familiar with it. There are, of course, other platforms available for controlling your mount, the interface for your mount, such as the Green Swamp server, which is here, which looks very elegant. And I haven't used that yet, but it's perhaps something in the future that I will use. But at the moment, EQMod tends to work for me. So you install EQMod if that's what you want to use. You now have to install all of the astronomy software which you use. So in my case, I'm installing PHD2, which I use for guiding. I'm installing Nina, which controls a lot of my session automation. I'm installing Astrophotography Tool, which I also use for controlling my session automation. I'm installing SharpCap because it's got loads of useful tools such as image capture and also the polar alignment tool, which is amazing. So I'm installing SharpCap. I'm going to be installing the Altair software as well. You have to create an account with Altair 
and then you can download the software. This software also includes the native drivers for my camera. So it's really good that I can basically get the native drivers and not have to necessarily go through the ASCOM platform for my camera. I also use ZWO cameras, so I need to install the ZWO drivers from ZWO's website. I've also installed the Skywatcher mount driver, which is available here on the Skywatcher Global website. So you can just download it and install it from there. I've also installed the native driver for my SV Boney camera, which is from their website. Now we're getting into some of the plate solving and image analysis tools, which are really useful. By far the most useful one that I use is ASTAP. It's used for your plate solving in Astrophotography Tool and in Nina as well. So it's really important that you install ASTAP and it has loads of image analysis tools as well. It can show you things such as uh, camera tilt, etc. Not only do you have to install the software, but you also have to install the star catalogs and then you can put those in the relevant folder within the program. I also install All Sky Plate Solver and again you have to install the star catalogs for this. It's another piece of software which is often used for plate solving and it can be really useful. And finally I install Plate Solve 2 which again is a plate solving piece of software and it also requires you to download the catalogs for that particular piece of software. Once you have installed all of this software and then configured it and downloaded the databases and so on you then have to configure the software itself in order to use and interact with each other. So for example, I've installed ASTAP for near solving and I've also put ASTAP down for blind solving as well because I know it works quite well, but I've also put Plate Solve 2 as another piece of software which I can use for plate solving. And also here in Nina, I've also asked it to use ASTAP as its main piece of plate solving software and I've configured the extension to the program in this little box here. The next steps with this particular PC is to leave it running I know that sounds a bit weird, but because it's a new PC, you have to allow all of the Windows updates to download. It's really important, and I cannot emphasize this enough, that you security patch your OSs. Every second Tuesday of the month is known as Patch Tuesday, and it's when companies like Microsoft and many others, Adobe and a few others, release software and security bug fixes to your particular OS that you're running. And it's really important that you just leave your PC on after the second Tuesday of every month and it will then find your updates. So if I go into Windows Updater here, you can see that it has checked for Windows updates and any that are due to be installed are here. It um, can be useful if you forget to do this, to disable Windows updates when you're imaging because it can sometimes automatically install them right in the middle of imaging and restart your PC, which means you've lost your entire imaging session. So every second Tuesday, leave your PC on during the day and let it download and install all of the updates. And then you know your PC will be good to go for another four weeks. The final thing to do with your new PC is to use it, is actually to just connect everything together and see if you can control your mount, see if you can slew, see if you can connect your cameras and see if you can get some images coming in on your PC there are always going to be areas that you have missed when you set up a new PC and it's not until you start imaging that you can do things such as configure PHD2. That requires an actual imaging session to be able to do that. I hope that was useful. That's a whistle-stop tour of some of the software that you need to install when you configure your imaging PC.